オレンジジュースイエーイ Alright, so this is 100% orange juice. So, basically what this is is a board game where you use cards and, you know, stuff to try and win the game. This is the kind of hub area where you can look at various things, such as the user guide, which will explain the game to you, your own player info, you can play the campaign, and other stuff, and other stuff, and you can spend in game currency, shopping, and whatnot. We're gonna go into free play. Now, for multiplayer, I don't believe you're able to use Steam to join. So you actually have to go into create a lobby and you can set things, you can set your lobby name, you can set what map it would be playing. I usually just leave it on random for my stuff. Game speed, field events, all that kind of jazz and a bunch of stuff that I have no idea of what the fuck I'm doing. But it's a very, you know, as you can see it's pretty, <laughs> pretty uh, standard-esque multiplayer. We're actually going to be doing the single player for the purposes of the video here. And we'll be doing a random field because I couldn't care less which field it chooses. And I have never messed with field events or anything like that. I've never messed with these. I have no idea what these are. So for the purposes of this, we'll just be doing default wherever the hell default was. Well, default's gone now. I'm assuming default is now the blank. So we'll be using the blank. Uh... <laughs> Cool. Good talk. So whenever you go to play a game, you need to obviously choose a character. Some of these characters are DLC. She's a DLC. Sira. She's a DLC. He's a DLC. Uh, I think you're a DLC as well. And you. So those are the DLC characters. Those four characters. Currently, I can only play the four DLC characters and my avatar character, which is Sigiri. Which is fun. Um... Each of these characters is different. They all have their own unique benefits and disadvantages. Nanako, for instance, right here, has a plus two to her defense and a plus one to her evasion. Apparently, she also has a recovery value of four, which means whenever she's down, she starts at four for recovering rolls. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Sagiri here. Oh, they also have different HPs. She, Nanako only has HP of three. Sagiri here is a attack of plus one, a defense of negative one and an evasion of plus two so each character has their own advantages and disadvantages that allow them to uh to operate in a different fashion they also each have a different hyper ability which is a card that is unique to each character and will only be dealt to the character so Sigur so no one else will ever be dealt an accelerator the accelerator card can only be dealt to Sigur. And in this case, what the Accelerator does is, it, for one chapter, which means just basically one turn, it allows Sigiri, the character, to roll two dice for movement, battle, bonuses, and drops. Meanwhile, Nanako's, ex Nanako's Hyper is Deploy Bits, which means that during a battle, she can gain a total of seven points, which will be randomly distributed to attack, defense, and or evasion. So, yeah. Each character has a unique hyper that is in a, you know, and unique stats. So, prior to the game, as you can see, you have a little binder here. The binder would be bigger, but I'm playing in 800 by 600 resolution because I'm dumb and I didn't change it prior to starting. Oh, there's also random. You click on this to randomize. We're not going to random because I don't want to random. Um, but you have a little binder here where the cards that you personally own are here. Each player, prior to the game, selects cards that they want to have in the main deck. Now, I don't, I don't know if the game adds a few extra cards, like sprinkles them in, for funsies or not, but the cards that you pick all get, all get put into a big deck that's in the center of the board. So, if I pick I'm on fire, for instance, I'm not guaranteed to get this card dealt to me. This card can actually be dealt to anyone. Which is an interesting dynamic. So you usually want to pick cards that are more beneficial to you than anyone else. So you'll be looking at cards and you'll be like, man, what cards will help my style of play more than anyone else's style? But in the beginning, early times, you you pretty much only have a few cards to choose from. And a lot of them are going to be helpful to everyone. So Arbitz, for instance, is a plus two to defense. This is not actually useful to me in the least. Because Sagiri as a character is all about evasion. She's not actually for defending. 
and she comes from, I think, Bullet Hell styled games, if I, if I remember correctly. I do want to play each one of these, like, characters' little camp hangs prior to playing them, um, you know, like, prior to playing the games that they correspond to, so we'll see what happens with that. But Dash is something that's actually very useful to me. It's a, it's actually useful to everybody, because it rolls two dice for movement, so it's actually a useful card for every character. I'm on fire, plus one attack, negative one defense. Personally, a very good card for Sekiri, but it also helps everybody else. Now, you'll see here there's a level and a cost for each card. We'll talk about those at, well, a different time. We're not going to talk about them now. We'll talk about them whenever we uh, need to be using them. But this, this whole deck building thing creates an interesting dynamic where you're trying to pick cards that are going to help you, but also not going to help your opponents too much, because they will be given to essentially everybody. And like I said, in the early goings where you don't have too many cards to play with, um, it's pretty tough to, to necessarily build a deck that's going to be perfect for you. So normally I like to pick half of my field. I like to pick cards that are useful to me, and then half of them I like to have as cards that aren't useful to, to virtually anyone. So sometimes I throw in Saki's Cookie because it's only a heal 1 HP. It's kind of a crap card. So I throw in cards like that so that, you know, people are going to be dealt cards they don't want. <laughs> because that's how I roll. But once you have your, you know, have your full set, you hit ready, you get into the game, and there we go. I'm fighting Nanako, I'm fighting Sigiri, and I'm fighting Saki, I believe. And I'm playing on a map I actually don't want to play. For the purpose of this video, the game is at 6. I'm already going to be in a battle. They are not really letting me explain things too well. But uh, for the purposes of this video, we're going to be running at 2 speed, which is the normal speed. As you can see, all the cards right there in the thing. Now, every character starts with a card, which I'm pretty sure is random. It's usually not going to be something that you really want. So she rolled for her attack. Her attack, she rolled only a 1. Uh, I was guaranteed the evade there, so I evaded it. The way evasion works is if I would have failed my evade roll, I would have been hit for whatever her attack die was. In this case, it would have been a 1. If you defend, no matter what, you're going to get hit for 1 point of damage. So, in that case, her defense roll was a 5 and my attack roll was a 3. She still got hit for a 1 because it's just how it works. Um, as you can see, the board is comprised of many different tiles. See, she tried to, she tried to, uh, I don't actually know what she tried to do, I wasn't paying attention. The board is comprised of very many different tiles. Gold are places that you go to get stars. Uh, red is a place where there's an encounter. A blue is a drop panel where you lose stars for landing on. A purple is a teleport. And a green, I believe, a uh, green is a draw. There is also a move panel, but it's not on this field. In some fields, there are move panels where you can land and you can move. So they're interesting. Prior to your turn, you're able to, if you choose to, play a card. I actually can't play any cards because currently I have, uh, I don't have enough stars. This costs three stars to play. I only need a level of one star, like a... As you can see, there's little star things by your character. These are essentially your level. They progress as you complete your normas, which are basically your objectives. And everyone starts at level 1. So I could play a dash if I had two more stars. I don't, so I can't play that card. You can also use info just to check out the whole board and be like, Oh man, what's going on here? You know. You Every character will start at their home, which is a place... Planet Earth. Nice. Uh, which is just a, you know, it's just a little slot that's marked down as their home. How homes work is that's where you need to go back to get your Norma recognized, quote unquote. You can use anyone's home to do it, but your specific home will allow you to stop mid-roll, which we might be able to show later. So I'm rolling, and as you roll you're able to, you know, choose which paths to go down. I'm going to personally go down and grab a uh, card here. The game is divided into chapters, which is just basically everyone's, like, every set of turns. And apparently the AI is being super aggressive. They're following me down. Again, an attack roll of one. I can easily evade that, and I do. 
I throw my attack roll, it's a 3, they defend for 7, but they still take a damage because they chose to defend rather than evade. Evade means if you land and evade, you will take no damage. Someone set a card! That was a trap card! Someone had put that down, and uh, she got hit for 1 point of damage, because that's how Mio's hammer works. I'm gonna take another roll, land on a bonus. I rolled for three, so I gained bonus three stars. Later on, that'll become more and more and more as the game progresses. The AI is still coming hard after me. An attack of five. This I might screw up. I'll try to evade roll. I evaded for eight. If I would have messed that roll up, she would have killed me instantly. She would have dealt the same amount of damage as her die roll. So she would have dealt five damage, and I would have died instantaneously. An attack of four, defensive six. She takes one more point of damage because, again, she's defending rather than evading. That's how this works. And now Saki's coming in to just, you know, scoop up the, uh, scoop up the free victory. And now she's coming in to fight me! Everybody just wants to fight! She's so happy! Obviously I'm going to evade, that's how my character is built. Oh, she rolled a 1 for defense! Critical failure in D&D terms, but in reality, uh... So yeah, if you roll really low for defense, you just... It's the difference between the attack and the defense rules, how it works. You always have to take one, but you do apply that. So I can actually play a dash here. I have no reason to, and I'm not going to. I was going to just to demonstrate, you know, playing a Oh, Saki's cookie. AI, stop picking crap cards. So she has to roll a four to revive. She has to roll a five. I think a five is the standard. Certain characters have higher if they're you know, as a uh, disadvantage to them, certain characters have lower as an advantage to them. It's just dependent on the character. Saki's Cookie is actually a free card. Isn't that interesting? Alright, let's move. We roll for three, we landed on an encounter slot, which means that we have to fight a enemy. When you, Whenever you initiate combat, you always go first. If somebody else initiates combat, they're going first, so... And that's very specific towards one character, because there's a character who is invincible. It, like, he has his hyper card is protagonist privilege. It allows him to not be ruled against if he's ruling first, so... For him, it's very specific, like, it's very important that you uh, get a rock things first off. But in most cases, it's important to go first. So I made it to a, uh, I made it to a home, quote-unquote. Which I, this is actually the home of player 3, I believe, so. This game is running at 30 frames, even though my fraps counter is saying 60, it's very weird. Once you get to a home, and you, you, you know, you, uh, level up by doing your objective, you get to set your next objective, which are called normas, I don't actually think that's a real word or anything, but, um, you get to choose your next objective each time you do one, so. In my case, I already have two wins. So I, in this should, in this scenario, should just pick defeat two or more enemies because I've already gotten that complete. It's done. The next time I land at a home, I will advance to level three. So there's no point in me choosing the stars route for this for this instance. And I'm being attacked once more. The attack of four. All I have to do is roll two. Oh no! But I tied her. I was wrong. If I tie, I still lose. It's, it runs those kind of rules. So I lost my stars. Every time you lose a battle, you lose some of your stars. I think it's half, but I could be wrong. And they go to the victor. The victor goes, you know, to the victor goes to spoilers. So, I got wrecked. In that particular instance. That's what happens as Siguri. Either you evade and you take no damage, or you don't evade and you just die. That's usually how it goes for her. So, it's a pretty fun character to play if you're liking high-risk, high-reward characters, and I tend to. Although, I usually play Nanako, because I really like Nanako. Even though she has 3 HP, her defense is just incredible. And her hyper is amazing. Deploy, bitch! It's a good, it's a good hyper. Now, Hyper is, like I mentioned, are very powerful cards that are only dealt to the character that, uh, you know, like, Deploy Bits will only ever be dealt to Nanako. I don't believe any other character can ever attain your Hyper. I think that even if they use a, uh, a hand swap card, because there are cards that will swap the, um, that will cause players to swap cards. So if I, you know, if I play 
I think I think it's like Christmas presents or something like that. That switches the uh, cards in players' hands. I think that even if you do that, your hyper will be changed to the player who is receiving its hyper. So I don't believe that my accelerate, for instance, could ever end up in any other character. I'm doing a really bad job of explaining this game, and I completely understand that. But it's just like I. I wanted to basic. I wanted to be able to basically say what was going on to some extent and show a game without it being um, hectic from multiplayer or me playing story. So, but I'm doing a really piss poor job of actually explaining crap to you. But it's a very simple board game, as you can see. It's a very simple board game. You collect stars and you collect wins, and you hope to get to the highest level before anyone else. You want to get to level 6, so you fill your level meter to 5 stars, and then you finish it to, you know, like, in it, and it's, it's special. And every time someone lands home and activates their Norma, their particular theme song will begin playing. So in this case, I think we're listening to Saki's theme, which I'm not a... I don't think is actually that good. Saki, you suck. theme's not that great. There are better themes out there. So now we're just playing. Now we're playing. I've explained everything, so now we're just playing. <laughs> Let's do this! Let's win this game, shall we? Uh, I am going to roll a dash here. I paid three stars, I believe. And now I'm gonna just roll some dashing. Now if I stop here, that means I do not take any more of my move. I would end my turn right here. I'm not doing that. Because I'm actually trying to get home at this point, so I can activate my next level. Leveling up is important, not only because it gets you closer to winning the game, but it also lets you use more powerful cards, because stronger cards are reserved for higher levels. So in this case, if you fall behind, you fall behind hard. This is a board game where Falling behind is really bad. It's kind of like Monopoly in that sense, where if you fall behind, you're not really going to be able to catch up too well. Unless you activate your hyper. Your hyper abilities are generally a pretty... I missed my evade rule. Your, your hyper abilities usually are, aren't too expensive to play, and they are a way of, you know, changing the game. So, you usually like to keep your hyper on you for a big time, you know, a big time moment. They are your way of getting back into the game or of cementing your position at the top. I rolled a one, and I made it home. And I have achieved my Norma. And now my theme song's playing. I'm gonna choose get 70 stars here because I'm not a, uh, I'm not a heavy hitting character. There are characters who have bonuses to their attacks attack rolls, and they are the characters that are more so meant to fight, to win by fighting. I'm not meant to win by fighting. I have a bonus of one to my attack, but like I've said, it's this is a high risk, high reward character. It's easier as Siguri, in my opinion at the very least, to just run through the map real fast and collect a bunch of stars, more so than it is to actually engage in combat and win it. But that's just my opinion. I'm sure other players uh, play Siguri in a very aggressive fashion because of her evade, but I'm not a big fan of that. Alright, I have to, I think, discard a Oh, I only have two cards now. Three cards now, I mean. Where's my card list? Here they are. I forgot that I played Dash. So in this case, everybody has more stars than me. So it would actually be beneficial for me to try and attack somebody if I uh, want to be brave. Because if I win, I steal their stars. Piggy bank, what? What does that card do? Gain stars equal to five times the number of chapters passed since this card was set. This is a trap card, but I'd have to come back this way. That's an interesting trap card. I'm not sure, because I, it makes it seem as if the person who lands on it gets that, right? Well, maybe I'll come back this way. We'll see what's happening. Do I want to challenge you to a battle? 
Mm, well, if I don't, I'm going to land on a drop space, so I will actually challenge you to a battle to avoid uh, losing any coin. What are you going to roll? An attack of five. I might not be able to evade. I wasn't able to evade, and she steals my stars. Fantastic. Big Bang Bell. Oh my god. That was her hyper, by the way. That was, uh, Saki's hyper wrist. Big Bang Bell. It's a trap, and I think it deals two damage. But I could be wrong about that. I don't actually know. I know it's her... her... Oh, wait, we can, we can just check. Every... Every unit on this and two adjacent squares takes one damage, plus one for every two chapters since setting the trap. On KO, half the stars go to the player who set this trap. Oh. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's a pretty powerful card. There is an achievement tied into knocking out two players with it at the same time. I think the highest HP that people will have is five, so... Dealing, you know, even three damage, which is pretty reasonable. Hurts like hell, you know. Does quite a bit. I'm no longer going to explain anything to you guys. Because I've already explained everything, pretty much. I don't know what else to say. I really don't. I just, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to just briefly go over stuff. And then I did a really bad job of explaining anything. And it's like, why did I, why, what's the point then? Uh, you only have 2 HP. I'm totally going to attack you and try to steal your stuff. Hello, hello, money. And that's how you can quickly ruin someone's day in this game. Uh, players who are winning are in constant danger and they have to watch their HP. Because if they don't watch their HP, a player is going to come up and jack them and then steal their stars. Which is what I have done. I came over to Saki, I beat her, and I stole her stars. And now she's not in as good a position as she once was. This is very important, more so for late game. You pretty much want to keep everyone away from 200 stars, because 200 stars is the final amount that they'll need to win the game with. So if anyone has 200 stars, you're kind of in a bad place unless they're, you know, unless they're not at max level yet, but... I'm always, uh, I'm always scared. I'm always scared about that. Like, I don't try to let anyone get to four stars or whatever, and I just got my hyper. I'll drop Saki's cookie to keep my hyper. The best hyper I've ever used was whenever two people were on the same square, because then I could, uh, I was able to attack both of them using the same hyper. And, uh, it was pretty fantastic. Yay, I drew a card! Shield? I've never seen this card before. It may, must have come with a new DLC. In this case, I'm going to drop dinner, because I don't want to heal everyone else. Although dinner is obviously a useful card if you are trying to A, keep someone else alive because you don't want someone to gain a further advantage, or B, heal yourself whenever everyone else is max HP. But there are times whenever I'm sitting and I'm like, oh crap, you know, Player 2 is going to get killed by Player 3, who's in the lead. I can't have that happen. Because, uh, you know, sometimes bad things happen. You just never want a player who's already, like, in the lead to, can, to spiral, you know? Huh. Interesting. Alright, since I've never seen that card, I wanted to check. Now, in this case, I could bust my accelerator and I could take out Saki in a battle, more than likely. But instead, I'm going to play Dash, and I'm going to just try to get some distance between me and her. For Saguri, her accelerator, you really don't want to use it only to get to X location. You want to use it to beat someone's face in, because you've rolled twice in battles as well. And that's for attack and defense, so it's like, you may as well use it to beat someone's face in. You know, so... <laughs> like, if you're using it just to get to, you know, point B, that's just bad. You want to beat someone's face, and you want to beat someone's face good. But it is pretty cool in this game that every time someone gets home and plays, it, you know, it plays their theme. It's lovely. It's a lovely time. Four, I'm not gonna get to where I want to be. 
and I think you could only get dealt your hyper one time per game, but I honestly don't know. I have n I don't think I've seen... I've only played four hours of this game, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone get a hyper more than one time. But I might just be stupid. Yeah, maybe people have. I like we're playing with all... Uh, it is interesting that we're playing with the DLC characters. Everyone here is a DLC character except for Sigiri. That's interesting. Alrighty. Let's take a roll. I don't know what that trap is. I'm not going to bother with it. No reason to walk onto a trap. The only trap I want to walk on is the one that's by them. I want my trap back. <laughs> it is piggy bank and I want my stars. I would be able to win the game then, I think. Alright. I rolled a 1. That was a fantastic roll. I was about to say, I'm pretty much guaranteed to get home in the next two turns. I'm still pretty guaranteed to get home. But a 1 is a terrible roll. I need to roll a 2 or higher and I'll get, to, uh, I'll get home. And then I can set my next Norma. I will level up, and then set my next Norma. So I rolled a 2, made it home, healed, cleared my Norma, and now I'm setting my other one, 120 stars, I've already got them. In fact, I'm only 20 stars shy of winning the game completely. I just have to get, to the, I just have to get around the boards a couple of times. Or get some lucky lands, if I land on other people's houses, like I said, other people's homes houses. In this case, the AI just made a stupid mistake, and I'm going to bust an accelerator to exploit it. So, I'm using my accelerator to not only get over here and beat her face, but also take advantage of her home to activate my next Norma. So now I'm at level 5, I'm going to choose 200 stars, I already have them. So now the next time that I land at a place, at a home, I win the game. I will have achieved level 6, and I'll become the best. So that's, just, that's it, that's what you're doing in the game, is you're actively trying to screw over your competition by playing cards and by, you know, fighting them at various points, while also moving around the board and collecting stars, etc. It's a, it's a very interesting board game, with a lot of RNG aspects to it. There is nothing there. I could go and take the drop. Um, I'm gonna go collect a card, because they're... We're not exactly home free. You're never home free in this game. Anything can go wrong. I could get teleported across the board via random teleport. Uh, I could just get attacked and lose my stars that way. Especially because I managed to walk right back into a uh, into range of my opponents. So it's you're never you're never guaranteed to win. Like even if you're, you know, I've seen players who've uh, gotten to this point like to where I am. Like I could just lose all my stars right here and then lose the game. So I could play plus three defense and try to survive it, but I already have a negative one. I'd only have a plus two at that point. I'm probably I'll play it. Alrighty, what cards do I have? Nothing useful. I have to go. My people need me. Alright, this is bad. This is really bad. Am I going to lose this fight? Roll weak. Oh, God. Six! It wouldn't have mattered what I roll! <laughs> so, see, I just lost all my stars. Which means that I can't win the game anymore. So, now the person who's in the catbird seat, as it were, is Saki who is one star shy of having the requirement to win the game. You need 200 stars to win the game. And Saki is one away from that, but 
the advantage here is she only is at level four. She still has to go. She still has to hit two times. Like she has to get to two places. I need to five. Oh, I'm at six. I'm 50 stars away from being able to win the game. I have to work my butt off now. Collect some stars. I have two weak, weak characters here. Both of them are pretty hurt. Oh, and you're even going to fight me. Well, thank you. Uh, it's all about this evade. Oh, god damn it. <laughs> RNG for real. And there go all the stars. The stars are now gone. Um, that's great. That's really, really awesome. And Saki is once again in the lead because uh, player one got hyper aggressive and thought they could win and um, didn't really work out. Had I been any other character, I could have defended probably and not have been killed there, but Siguri's evasion just sometimes doesn't work out. Had I won the fight, I would have probably been able to win the game. But. As we've seen, fate is sometimes not in your side. You can take nothing for granted in 100% orange juice. Any advantages you have, you need to, uh, you need to not squander. Uh, I will not do a fight here. I will continue to move. And I'll roll for some stars. At 104, I need so many more stars to win the game. The boss is at 1 HP, so I should actually consider going and fighting the boss now if I can. It just depends on what rolls I get. If I can land on a boss square, I'm going to try and land on a boss square. It's, it's that simple. Because the boss is uh, worth quite a bit of money if you defeat him in combat. On the combat. And I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to, uh... Uh-oh. You're moving- No! <laughs> Curses! I could have fought the boss, but I was sent to a random panel. Oh, I was forced to go away. What a crazy trap. So my aspirations of winning the game were dashed in an instant, as I was sent far, far away. A cloud of seagulls. Two, da <laughs> Two damage, randomly assigned. Big bang bell again. So I guess it... <laughs> she hurt herself. So I guess you can be dealt your hyper multiple times in a game. Interesting. So if I were to get my hyper again, I could still win, potentially. I can win even without getting my hyper again, but it's just a little bit dangerous here. Because player two is right by their home, they're going to draw one. Nope, they're going to stop so that they can achieve their next level of, of, you know. And now she's only got to make it to one other place and she'll win the game, because she has the stars required for it. And there you go. 400 right there. Could summon a boss again if I wanted, but I don't know how that would help me. You know, I'll do it anyway. And I think that actually costed me 30 stars? Did that cost me 30 stars? That's crazy. Chapter 40. Saki's cookie. Yeah, it's a pretty simple board game. A lot of RNG, though, to it. But that's a lot of the fun, is that it's just so random. You never really, you can never really say, I'm going to win the game. Because you just don't know. I'm going to go this way to avoid the trap.
that was a mistake by the P, uh, PAI, again, she stopped at home, where she could be attacked by Saki, if Saki rolled high enough, but Saki didn't. So, I drew a card, Saki's cookie. Your cookie? Uh, but you're not the same person, does it look like? Maybe you are. I don't know these games that you're from. I haven't played them. Potentially a two roll away from winning is that AI right now. Player two could win the game here soon. My aspirations. Oh. I wish I would have came here earlier. The money was real. Don't draw two. Oh, you missed it by one! <laughs> I can still win! I just have to get home! Four, four, four! Uh. Also, Nanako's music? Really cool. That's another reason why I play Nanako. Oh, it's so close. This is agonizingly close. Two players have everything they know. Oh, Big Bang Bell again! <laughs> That's the third time we've seen that card. Huh. I just won the game, though. Achieved 200 stars. I've won the game. Had no business winning this game after I had thrown it away, but I managed to win. Glorious. And after every game, you get a you get a little bonus. You get some bonuses. Fantastic. Yeah, that was your brief rundown of 100% oranges that wasn't actually brief. Woo!